Hey, our review family, keep it high, keep it tight. My name is Jay Morris, the review guy, and I'm back to bring you another video. And in this one, I'm going to be doing an album review for Sky Harbor's new album, Sunshine Dust. So this was released September 7th, and this was a part of my most anticipated albums that were kind of upcoming in, I believe, like August and September. But anyways, the reason I was so hyped for this album wasn't because of the band, because I had actually never heard of Sky Harbor previously. The reason I was so excited for this album coming up is because the single track Dim that dropped from this album, which I did a track review of, man, that it feels like Dim just came out, but I know it's been months since that track came out. I was so intrigued and so entranced by the sound that that album built straight away from the start of that song that it really excited me to explore this album more. And... I want to go back in this band's discography to see how they sound previously because I wanted to kind of go into it blind, go into this album as like my first experience with the band. And what did I come away with? Well, it's a good progressive metal album, I'll tell you that, but there's a lot that I kind of want to dissect when it comes to the styles of this album and the things that I feel like could have been done better and the things that I think they did very well. So if you are unfamiliar with uh, Sky Harbor, they are a progressive metal band that was formed in, I believe, 2010, if I remember correctly, and they are a an Indian and American band. I believe they were formed in, like, Ohio, and they've been making some progressive metal music. I believe this is their third album. The reason I'm saying I believe is because this is stuff that I looked up back when this album was uh, forthcoming, so I'm hoping that I'm getting these facts straight. If not, I apologize, but I really digged this album's start. I feel like it had a really good start with the first about three to four tracks. I feel like a lot of times Sky Harbor takes these cookie cutter ideas that you get a lot of bands trying to play in this playground of making progressive metal music just to make progressive metal music and following the status quo on the line, just not moving away from it. But I think that Sky Harbor takes those ideas and tries to push some boundaries with it, I really do, but it really seems like as more and more bands are just like trying to incorporate this progressive veneer, and just so you know, progressive music is my favorite music, um, I feel like more bands are trying to incorporate it and falling short, so Sky Harbor really had the challenge of setting themselves apart in the midst of a lot of classic progressive metal bands that are coming out with material as well as the newer ones that are probably more popular than them. I'm talking bands like Periphery, I'm talking bands like Born of Osiris, I'm talking bands like Veil of Maya, uh, these types of bands, these kind of progressive metalcore bands and like uh, Invent Animate, and then you have older bands, you have bands like Mashuga, and you have like uh, later on in, I believe, 2019, Dream Theater is going to be dropping something, so it's kind of like when you're starting off, fairly starting off, I mean, they've been around for a little bit of time, but not like decades, um, when, you've, when you're trying to fight against these bands that are true classics and dropping and making classics, you got to set yourself apart, and for the most part, I feel like Sky Harbor does a very, like a fairly good job of that. But, still, I feel like at times they can fall into the pitfalls of Progressive Metal 101. There's not really anything that pops into my mind, but when I was listening to it, there were little trace, whether it be a riff, whether it be a type of vocal harmony melody with a riff, whether it be some of the drum work, whether it be some idea that they're trying to employ in the current track that they're working on. I feel like they could do more in the way of trying to set it apart, but see, that's the thing is... Progressive bands have the like this kind of obsession with making longer songs, and Sunshine Dust by Sky Harbor is no exception. They love to make long songs on this album. You have songs that are going into the late four minutes, you have songs that are going into five minutes, six minutes, and that's not even that long in the grand scheme of things when you consider other progressive bands like Dream Theater, like uh, Vandom Plaws. I mean, a lot of bands like this like to go above and beyond for music by making songs long in this progressive field, but I feel like it might have benefited Sky Harbor more with their style, their kind of eclectic style, and I'll get into that in a second, to maybe make the songs a bit shorter and take a step back because you don't have to make songs really long or longer than usual if you're a progressive band. That might be a normality, it might be something that is clung to by the, like, the bands in this respective genre, but you don't necessarily have to do that. 
because it's not a necessity. And like I said, I feel like it might have benefited them if they would have done otherwise. Now, getting into that whole eclectic style thing, that's one thing that I got to praise on the album is the fact that they really drew from a lot of inspirations. And in the end, while they are just a progressive metal band and why this is a progressive metal album, I feel like from start to finish, you're getting a lot of just little shots, little traces of other genres, whether it be like whether it be like emo, post hardcore. I got some touches of like uh, like uh, new metal on the song uh, Descent, um, which is super heavy. Super, super heavy. I remember when I saw the video for that, I, that was one of the singles. I believe there's three singles. I believe it was Descent, Dim, and then the uh, Sunshine Dust, the self-titled track that is the last track, the 13th track. But um, the the new metal vibes pretty much stick to Descent, and it's almost like a new metal core progressive metal vibe. But I, I actually really enjoyed that track. Another thing I can really praise is the fact that they blend heavy and soft really well. That's another thing that a lot of progressive metalcore bands and metal bands can kind of have trouble finding their footing for it is trying their best to go from these just really heavy growled or screamed uh, vocals with these breakdowns and just heavy riffing and heavy drums to like soaring melodies with like higher vocals and stuff. I can't tell you how many like progressive bands I have heard that have really genuinely attempted to try to break that wall and make it to where the two flow seamlessly uh, and many fail but I feel like Sky Harbor for the most part hits the mark when it comes to trying to do that I think that they do um, blend the two very well like on a track like Descent it starts off just really heavy really hard pummeling but it goes into those softer melodies while still keeping some of those original veneers from the start of Descent, which are very heavy, and bringing them throughout the track and making it flow to seem like one concise idea that they're trying to convey. Whereas on a song like Dim, which was probably, which is my favorite song on the album, maybe it's a nostalgia type of thing, but uh, Dim starts off with this harmonious melody, and it's just, I like the fact that they're able to blend genres without it feeling too forced, too clunky. They do that very well. And honestly, when it comes down to it, Sunshine Dust is a good progressive metal album. And if you like progressive music, check it out. There are some really good ideas on this album. This is a band that I want to follow. I want to check out their excuse me, previous discography. And this is a band I'm excited to see where they go from here because... Um, there are a lot of good ideas. I feel like some could have been executed in a better way, and I don't want to sound too critical because I did really enjoy this album, and I am happy that I was anticipating it. I'm happy that I've covered it and listened to it, and I'll probably listen to it again because um, this has been a pretty good year for progressive music. It's been a little bit barren, but you have had some really great releases. Uh, talking about the band, like, Poem with their album Unique. I'm talking about Arrow with Neon. We might be getting a Born of Osiris later in the year. We got the Within the Ruins EP. That There's just quite a bit of progressive music that's coming out. Maybe not as much as usual, but you know how it, uh, you know how it is. But, um, yeah, so I'm going to give this album an 8 out of 10. I think that like I said, some things could have been executed better, but for what they were given and what they were working with, I think that they came through with a really well mixed, that's something I should add, very well mixed, uh, it, nothing really off put me about the mix, uh, really just overall serviceable but very above average progressive metal album. This wasn't mediocre, there wasn't necessarily a track where I was just like, oh, please let it be over. There were some tracks that I wish would have ended sooner, but that's from a critical like viewpoint not as like oh man this song sucks just by a I really wish they they probably could have ended it before then and it would have been an even better track but it's already a good track that type of thing so anyways guys if you've listened to this album I want to hear what you thought so post in the comments below like comment subscribe it helps me out a lot and I'll shout your channel out but I'll talk to you guys next time but until then my name is Jay Morris the review guy and I'm signing off saying farewell